it's not glamorous by any means. It gets to a point where you start driving in silence and you start start getting comfortable within your own self. I suggest it for everybody, for sure. It's just yeah, not it for everybody. And we are back with another episode of Zen Path Radio. I am your host, Ryan Son. And if you are an ambitious entrepreneur and or if you have the spirit of one, you are in the right place. Um, here, we interview a wide range of transportation founders and operators to fully understand what it takes to um, to improve your business and or get started. Um, so today I'm sitting down with Brandon, owner and operator of Expediting America. Um, what compelled me to interview him today is his willingness to be transparent. Um, he's a, he has interesting journeys as he travels around America with his dog, uh, Bubba Joe, and he just seems like an all around chill guy. Um, so yeah, without further ado, uh, I'm going to let, uh, Brandon, you know, take it away and explain who he is and how we got started in this journey. So welcome to the show, Brandon. How are you? Doing great, Ryan. How you doing? Hey, I'm living, I'm living a good life. I'm living a good life, man. So what state are you in right now? <clears throat> uh, currently in Dallas, Texas right now. How, are you liking it? I'm only going to be here for like another hour after I finish this. I'm heading up to uh, Oklahoma to pick up like some side work. And then I'm going to head up to Minnesota, my final destination for the week. You're all over the all over America and you're probably touching like, if not every state, if you know, probably most states, if not every state. Do you every ever state. get to sit down and enjoy the states or is it just touch and go with each one? If I wanted to, I could. And I do sometimes um, not by choice, really, mainly because we can't find loads or you know, we're bidding on things and just not getting jobs. So I, I try to make make uh, the most of the time when I'm sitting, you know, and I try to go on adventures and stuff like that and enjoy myself. But uh, for the most part, I'm trying to get it. So I'm trying to get on the road, you know, pick up a load, drop it off and then pick up another load, drop it off. I do three to 5,000 miles a week on average. So I'm Sheesh. not really doing that. You don't have much time to sit. So you're going, man, you're going. So, yeah. So you are in the Sprinter van industry. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. And so can you tell what, Everyone, what is the Sprinter Sprinter van industry? For those who don't um, have any experience with this industry, uh, well, so I do expedited freight, um, OTR, which means over the road. Uh, so I'm I'm hauling freight for like uh, General Motors, Procter and Gamble, a lot a lot of automotive parts, but also I mean anything from cowboy boots to computer software and stuff like that. You know, like uh, right now I'm hauling stuff for like medical equipment. I don't know if you can see it back there, but uh, it's back there. <laughs> um, and uh, so, yeah, it's um, a lot of my shipments are overnighted 500 miles or more. Um, so uh, you do. There are short runs. You could do local stuff. There are some cats that do that. Uh, it's harder to get into. It's harder to make. Uh, it's not harder. It's just a different niche right now. I'm in the OTR uh long run game and i don't really do the the local runs too much every now and then on weekends i'll pick up a few short runs you can usually do more on the rate per mile for shorter runs because they take most of your day up uh um, the shorter ones so take I, most of your day up yeah because you usually go to a shipper sometimes it doesn't get loaded up right away it might take it could take hours you know it just depends wow. on how busy they are most of the time 80 percent of the time you get in and out pretty quick if you're an expediter because you only have a few pallets as opposed to most semi trucks where they're loading up, you know, 15, 20, 30 pallets, whatever it may be. Um, so they try to get you in and out pretty quick. Um, but um, yeah, for the most part, um, that's pretty much what I do. Wow, that's crazy. You know, that, that's very interesting because I would have thought it would have been in the inverse, you know, like since it's local, I thought it would, you know, it would probably take less time versus it. It just depends on how mm. how busy they are, what type of warehouse, how they how they function. A lot of these mm. warehouses really don't have any order, uh, mm. since a lot of sh- a lot of freight is expedited. So a lot of the the orders and the information on the orders is messed up and incorrect. So sometimes you got to confirm that takes some time because you get you, once you get the load, you got to confirm it with your broker, with the dispatcher, and then they got to uh, confirm it with the broker. So sometimes that takes time. Uh, so, you know, if it takes you an hour or two hours to get loaded up and you have a 200 mile trip, uh, that's another three hours. So it's at five hours. Then when you get to the drop off, it might take another three, four hours if it's not quick, you know. Mm-hmm. So you just don't really know. There's some guys that do lo- local stuff like up in Chicago and in the Midwest or in the bigger cities. Um, and they, they can sometimes get two loads in a day, sometimes three, just depending on how they work it. But it's not guaranteed that way. So mm-hmm. I like doing longer loads because the the money is kind of guaranteed. So if I get a, a trip that's coast to coast, 2,500 miles, on average, you're doing a dollar a mile. So I know I'm going to make, you know, it's roughly 2,500 bucks gross for those, what, three days it might take me to go. Uh, it takes me about 
I do. I can do a thousand miles a day. So for twenty five hundred miles, be two and a half days. Maybe maybe two days if I really push it. Got it. Got it. <clears throat> so how did you get into this industry? Uh, a lot of people ask me how I got in the industry, and honestly, I wasn't looking. It was not like I was looking for uh, how to get into expediting cargo van, sprinter van, expediting anything like that. I was just looking for jobs at the time. I was doing carpentry. I had a hip hop R and B soul band. Uh, this is when COVID hit. And then things started getting really slow uh, on construction work. It slowed down so much because lumber went up really high. So I couldn't sit around and wait for it to pick up again, really. So I started applying so many jobs, so many jobs on Facebook Marketplace, Indeed, things like that. And uh, on Facebook Marketplace, there was one ad said, make uh, 1200 to 1500 a week. You got to be away two to three weeks at a time. Um, and I responded to it. I didn't think anything of it at the time because I'm like, I'm not going to get this, you know, whatever. But I was applying to so many jobs and they did hit me back. They responded and the rest, the rest is pretty much history. Um, and this is without any experience of this industry at all. You just responded and you. I had no experience. I had no idea what I was getting into. I thought I was maybe pushing drugs across the border or something <laughs> like that. I, I had I had no idea, you know, uh, and I did a lot of research going on YouTube. This is how I kind of got into the whole YouTube thing, because. I want, wanted to learn more about the business and how do you do that these days? You go on Google, YouTube and all that. And I did my research watching some other channels, uh, everything Apex, uh, Eagle Express, um, T-Swin. Uh, there's so many other channels out there um, that I follow to learn about the business. So that's kind of why I'm doing the YouTube thing now because it did help me out learning about the business. That's why I try to be so transparent, not only to show people um, you know, what it's like on a day-to-day, -day, but also show people because a lot of it, a lot of people think you can get in this business and just get rich all of a sudden, you know, like it's just overnight rich, but that's not how it is. Uh, after you pay your bills and expenses, insurance is really expensive gas. I'm, you know, I'm doing a couple thousand in gas every, every month, you know? So, uh, it just really depends. Yeah. So paying it forward, huh? Paying it forward, sharing the knowledge. Um, yeah. That's, that's awesome. So <clears throat> walk us through a day in the life of a, of a owner operator of a Sprinter van. Um, cause it seems like a very unique lifestyle, you know, very, like, very, um, very like on the road, like, and just, you know, just walk us through like what the day, what the average day looks like. So if I wake up and I don't have a load, I'm going to go, I have a load board. I have a carrier that I work with actually two carriers. Um, the people that got me in this business, I still work with them. They still book loads for me. In fact, they've been doing probably 80% of the booking since I started with my new van. Uh, I use another carry that I just started with, uh, GTMM. I just started with them. And then I have a load board that I go on. Um, honestly, they all probably, they, they all pretty much get the same jobs. But uh, being that my carrier that I started with has been in the business for like a few years and their MC numbers pretty well, they can book most of these jobs. Because if I try to do it myself, my MC number is very, very fresh. It's maybe, uh, I think it's five months old. So a lot of, uh, brokers won't really take you serious they don't it's a kind of like a credit system you know and like your credit score so the mc number you know if you have jobs that have been late or something like that it all goes on your mc you know your mc number so uh mine's still pretty fresh so i still book through the first people i went through so what i'll do is i'll wake up i'll uh go on load boards um i'll talk to my dispatcher i'm pretty much they're sending me loads and i'm telling them what my rate would be, you know, and if they accept it, they accept it that I'll get a job. But I could be on load boards and bidding from when I wake up at 7 a.m. to sometimes in the afternoon, two, three in the afternoon. Uh, so it does take a lot of time. Before, when I was just with a carrier with working for a fleet owner, they were doing all that work for me. They were booking all loads. I was just sitting there waiting. And um, so my days were kind of slow to start off. Um, what's the what's the the part that slows it up is it the waiting on the response part or is it the get constantly getting rejected until you get a yes a little bit of everything it's a little bit of you know getting rejected waiting to hear from brokers because when you place a bid you don't want to just keep placing bids because what if someone accepts your offer taking a load to the west coast and then you place a bid on something else and they, they accept it You're going to the east coast mm. you can't do both you know what i mean and you can't so, and like, then, say hey i already got a load unfortunately i can't do it anymore you can't do that Either. right you can't you can but you get penalized for it mm, so it goes in that record that you mentioned exactly so mm. uh that's something you don't want to do 
And so, yeah, waiting is the main thing because when you place a bid, you're going to wait to hear a response. Usually you want to give about 15 minutes or so. It could take longer. Um, and that's pretty much, yeah, the waiting process. Also, it's a lot of hurry up and wait when you get to a shipper and you deadhead to a shipper or you get to a receiver. Like I said, you never know how long you're going to be there. Um, for the most part, 80% of the time, it's pretty quick, but that 20% of the time you could be there for hours. And in that case, they give you layovers and detentions, uh, for your, for your time pretty much. So you mentioned the low board and there's a rating system. So, um, so give me an example of, let's say like, what's the top low board that is most used in this industry or just talk uh, about like a few names. I would say selectus. Selectus. Okay. So let's use Select- them as an example, right? Um, and let's yeah. use like a low board B. Does that rating system uh, cross over to the all the other? So yeah, or do you have a, to have a different rating system on each. It's a it's a government it's a DOT regulated mm-hmm. MC number, so it's for the whole USA. Got it, got it. And yeah. um, before you have a business, can you boost? Is that does that number follow the business or the operator or of the operator of the vehicle? Do you understand what uh, I'm trying fo- to say? Right, follows the business and the v ve- and and the and the operator of the vehicle. If you're an owner operator, it follows you, so you are the business essentially. Well, so like um, if you were an employee, so let's say when you first started, you know, you had you you uh, applied for the the business on on a uh, marketplace, right? You started right. driving around. Do you get a private rating? Can you like can you start your rating system? And so when you start your own business, that rating system. So it's mature, yes. Yeah. So so, it's, so your MC number is matured. You can't you can do that. If that's what you're saying, like, yeah, yeah, you, like I, I should have got it a long time ago. But honestly, this truck, this van came with an MC number. I pretty much took over a, a logistics business when I took over this van. Mm-hmm. Um, so it came with an MC number. I didn't have to apply for all that stuff, which is not expensive. I, if I, if I recall correctly, it's about three hundred bucks to get your MC number. It's not bad every year. Last you what every year? Okay, annually. Yeah, I think I think it's annually. Yeah, it's not too bad. Not too bad, um, especially yeah. how much money it can bring you in, right? Yeah, it's a low low entry cost to get into this business. As far as like compared to other businesses, it's not cheap to get in this business by any means. You got to get a van. Insurance can be pretty expensive, um, and then gas. You know, you got to have a little bit of a, a cushion in, ca- in case you have a few slow weeks or something like that, or a slow month. You just never know because it's not consistent. Understood. So, Brandon, what's the best place that you visited uh, since you've been on the road? Uh, I really like Steph Colorado. Or dropped off anywhere, Colorado. Yeah, I like Colorado. I like wow. um, I like North Carolina. I don't know, just uh, the scenery. There's a lot of different scenery in like that Colorado, Utah area. You know, it can go from desert to snow mountains and nice lakes, rivers, streams. Like you know, natural uh, landscapes. Yeah, like yeah, a wilderness really cool to... landscape kind of guy. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if you're gonna be driving around, you don't want to like driving through Texas and like Wyoming <laughs> and. Iowa and these states that are like the Great Plains and stuff is like nothing there, you know, and it's always windy. Um, so when you're driving through the mountains and stuff, the wind kind of gets blocked. So that's kind of nice, you know, and then it get, gives you something to look at other than just billboards and dust and dirt. And Yeah, <laughs> yeah so. I, I've traveled across America twice and I just really loved those like those very remote uh, uh, expressways when you just have just open lane. And you just can and just enjoy it. Just take it all in. You know what I mean? Um, and you can like look out and you can see like the fields and stuff like that. And you see like the the animals grazing. I know you had uh, on your YouTube channel, um, you had a run in with goats, which is pretty interesting. <laughs> <laughs> out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. I had to do a double take. I was like, because the lady just pulled up. The lady just pulled up, opens her back door, small Kia, like, I don't know what it was, Optima. <laughs> And there's goats just hopping. I thought it was dogs at first, like, because, you know, you, you figure a lady's going to walk her dogs, but three goats just hop out this <laughs> car and, and they go for a walk, you know? Just didn't expect that at all. That yeah, that's wild. awesome. You guys, if you guys want to see that, you guys got to check out his YouTube channel, uh, Expediting America, and you're going to see that video. Um, it's amazing. It's amazing. Like, you can <laughs> see his whole journey. Um, so, yeah, so, so tell us, like, so you said uh, on, on average, since you're doing mainly long trips, How many miles on average are you driving, um, let's say, like, per trip? Of course, I'm sure it all ranges, but let's just give us a ballpark of what you're looking at at long term. Probably 750 miles to a to a thousand on average, on average. Yeah, it's a lot on average. That's a lot. Yeah. So um, 
what does the average payday look like? So yeah, walk us through that. Uh, so I, our, 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 our pay our pay week uh, starts Monday and ends on Sunday at twelve midnight, and we get paid. I get paid every Friday from the carrier. It just depends. Uh, GTMM pays pretty much the next day. They have a factoring company that pay you right 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 away the next day. Uh, but the other carrier I work with is pretty much every Friday. And, okay. um, so, I mean, right now I'm averaging like next week, uh, with everything said and done right now, my next paycheck is going to be 4,000, uh, like 90, uh, for the whole week. Um, and then after expenses and everything, I'm going to be like 3,200, 3,200 take home. So, and that was, that's my, my best week since I became an owner operator five weeks ago so that's amazing man that's amazing that's amazing yeah no it's it's really cool yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so you feel like you just hit the lottery when you when you discovered this when you're kind of like looking for something and you kind of stumbled upon this you feel like you kind of hit the lottery it's like wow like i'm so happy i found i discovered this right everything happens that's for a what, reason that's what you think instantly uh, uh like right away i thought yes yeah, it's just easy it's driving it's no problem which it is you know it's it's just driving it's no problem but at the same time it's it's a huge mental game out here um, unless, unless you're going home every few weeks, which at that point for me, I just don't see it being profitable. If you're just going to be out here for two, three weeks and then go home for a week or two, it just, it just doesn't make sense. This is definitely a hustle game. You gotta, you gotta, I'm, I'm projected to do 200,000 miles this year to, to really make, to like make good money. You know, I want to, I want to, I want to gross $200,000 so I can net around like 120, 130, you know, after it's all said and done. So yeah. That's my goal for this year. This, I mean, sure. It's when you see, when you see the numbers and stuff like that. It's very attractive to, you know, think it's just uh, easy peasy. But to make to do those, you know, four thousand five five thousand dollar weeks, mm-hmm. you gotta drive. You gotta drive seventy eighty hours. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You gotta you know sleep maybe three four hours minimum a night uh, to make that work. You gotta you know we're sleeping at rest stops truck stops planet fitnesses waking up in the middle of the night having to find somewhere to you know use a restroom or use a bucket you know so sure uh it looks enticing the big number but when you factor in the amount of time you're out here you're waiting you know i don't have like kids i don't have all that stuff so for me it's a little bit different a lot easier i feel when i see these guys that have families and stuff like that i, I don't know how they do it because it's like to be out here you really have to be out here you can't Unless you're solidified in the game and you you've been doing it for a while, you have a good bank account built up or whatever, and you can yeah you can do two weeks at a time, three weeks at a time. If you're retired, you can do you know whatever you want. But um, for me, I'm trying to get it, man. There's no time to waste. I feel like going around with Bubba Joe it makes things so much easier. Oh, um, tremendously! I did my first hundred twenty thousand miles without him. I, I left him at home uh, with my ex at the time, and having him in the van is like night and day. I mean, I, I went through some pretty serious depression. My first 120,000 miles, you know, it's you, you're out here, you're, you're alone. You know, sometimes you wake up, there's no one in the parking lot. You know, it's like, it's just, it's, it's wild. You know, I look back, I don't really think about it much while I'm out here on the road until I'm done. I'm, I get home and I'm sitting there. And I'm like, wow, man, I just did, you know, 20,000 miles this month like that just blows my mind I could have gone around the world three or four times in one month you know so I just it's, it's crazy to me yeah like um and, and he seemed like just a, such a good dog you know like um and you know I, I seen even in one of your videos you know as they're loading up you know like Bubba Joe's just laying there you know laying there taking a nap so he's like he's like your buddy you know as you ride along and you know like just keep you grounded you know he, he's the best road dog man uh, awesome. I suggest if a company or, or your owner operator, I suggest you getting a dog, but it's hard. Not every dog's the same, you know, it's, it's really tough, but I, I just know him. He adapts to me pretty much. He's very much like me. And, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm very thankful for him, man. Big, big, big help. And he helps with the YouTube channel too. I mean, it's pretty much why the, <laughs> the, the channel's growing. So People come, come from Bubba Joe. Bubba Joe's the real and, star. It ain't because of me. Yeah. It ain't because of me. It's because of him. <laughs> <laughs> love it love it so um so yeah so you said you you're you're taking home what you said three three you said 380 or 320 i forgot which one you said uh like this week 3200 32 okay so uh yeah so 32 um so how do you how do you break down how do you break down the expenses is it like insurance like how do you break that down so my expenses every month for my van and my insurance my van payment is like a thousand uh 
like a thousand three hundred, and then my insurance payment is like fifteen hundred a month. So I say about three thousand a month for my van and insurance. Um, and then I mean gas. I'm doing now that I have a gasoline engine. It's not diesel. It's a lot better on gas. I'm I'm saving probably a thousand dollars a month on gas alone. Is that what you recommend um, going the gasoline route versus diesel? I rec I recommend I don't really recommend much for people in this business because everyone's mm -hmm. experience is going to be totally different. Got it. And got it. I hate recommending for things for people, and then they hit me up like, "Well, I, I went and got this <laughs> van, and now now there's problems with it," you know, because th the diesels do have a lot of problems. They have a DEF system that can cause you a lot of problems and be kind of expensive down the road. This gasoline doesn't have that, you know, so I'm not putting twenty bucks in DEF every few days into the engine. Um, it's just less power being a four cylinder. You can definitely tell like when you're going up hills and you're carrying, you know, 3000 pounds in the back, you can, you can feel it, you know, pushing, but it does, it is a turbo engine. So that helps a lot. Um, so I did like the diesel a lot, but I, I whatever, I you, whatever, you, whatever makes the money, man, you, you know, really, so. you really highlight the, the benefit of having no scales. No scales and no like no CDLs. I mean, we can mention the C CDLs later, um, right. but like uh, the the no no scales part. So like, does that also? I'm pretty sure that also helps on like saving time and and oh, tremendously, and also. tremendously, yeah, tremendously. Uh, that's pretty much one of the the main things about Sprinter Van expediting. It's just so much easier you know you don't have dot pulling you over every day every day i see a semi truck turned over or broke down on the side of the road um but yeah you got to stay confined to rest stops truck stops if i want to go to a wendy's or go to a park somewhere i can just pull up no problem semi truck you're not can't standing that, out you know? either you're just like blending right in with everybody else. yeah you like blend right in yeah nobody really i'm very incognito um so yeah, the, it definitely does save you time in that aspect. Not having to stop at scales and money wise too. It's cheaper on tolls. Um, everything. It's just it's so much. It's less reward money wise, but it's a lot less headache too. And you can still make decent money. So at that point, how much are you trying to make really in the long run? Uh, for me, my goal is to make a hundred thousand dollars my first year as an owner operator. So. Brandon, you, you ever seen that YouTube channel where uh, I forgot what the name of it? It's it's where like I think it's in like like Massachusetts somewhere, but they have a bridge, they have a, a road, a, a railroad, and they have a bridge which is like exactly six feet, and they record every like every truck hits the top, and it can't can't open can't open uh, it to the top yeah, of the yeah, truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna send yeah. that to you if you haven't seen that. I'm gonna send that to you like uh, later on. But like yeah. it's, it's it's so entertaining, but it just seems like you don't have to worry about any of that. You know, like you don't have to worry about any height, you know, requirements or anything. You don't until you're like in the northeast. In the northeast, they have a lot they have a lot of low bridges, you know, 10 foot mm -hmm. bridges. Before I was nine feet with my other van, but this one's nine feet ten inches because I have a vent fan that's up top. Mm -hmm. So it's another 10 inches up top. So before I could go into like drive throughs like Taco Bell and stuff like that, they're all usually nine feet. I could just sneak in there like Chick-fil-A. People will watch my van pull up and like, he's not going to go in there. You can just see him watching. <laughs> and I, and I, I just sneak under just enough, you know, and now, now I can't do that. I, I got to like park and walk in, but, uh, but it, it does, uh, it does help, you know, uh, not having to worry about, bridges taking your top off <laughs> <laughs> for sure for sure for sure so what's the most uh that um that you can make on a trip like what's the most that you've seen that is available when it comes to you know these long distance runs uh, just to give people some insight of what they're looking at well for like short well i'll do a short in the long run so okay. short runs uh the mo most i made on a short run was like 76 miles paid like 520 mm. So, uh, but that was like, they needed to ship the per person that was supposed to pick it up, fell through and they needed something last minute. And I had like no deadhead. It was in St. Pete. It was like 20 miles of deadhead from my house. Uh, so that, I don't know what that rate per mile is. I, I have that video on my YouTube channel. And then, um, like on a long trip, you're going to look at on average right now, it's about a dollar a mile, 80 cents to a dollar a mile, depending on where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. Every city is going to have different rates. Every day you're gonna have different rates, really. Um, but some towns like um, Laredo, El Paso, states like Florida, California, where a lot of stuff uh, like Florida, a lot of a lot of freight goes to Florida, so a lot of drivers go down there. And even though stuff is produced in Florida, it's not a, a, a lot of stuff. 
a lot of stuff that's going out. So you have a lot of drivers down there, you know, it's like a feeding frenzy. So everybody's bidding. So when you have a lot, a lot of people bidding on stuff, the rates tend to go lower. So, uh, out of places like that, you, you might have to take a, a hit for like 80 cents to 90 cents to get out of towns like that. But on long runs too, you can, you can some like, uh, I just had one from Minnesota down here, this one t- to Dallas, it was 920 miles and it paid, uh, 13, 1300 bucks. So that's wow. over a dollar mile. That's like a dollar, um, like a dollar 30, whatever that may be. You complete that trip. So 900 miles. That was yesterday. So, so I left in the, uh, about 2 p.m. And then I got here at 8 a.m. this morning. So it took you, what, 24 hours to hit 13, yeah. 1300? Yeah, gross. Uh, whoa, gross. That's crazy. Gross. That, that's amazing. Spent, man. That, that's, that's great I money. Spent, uh, I spent 200 bucks in gas, uh, 14% dispatch fee. So probably netted like 900 bucks, somewhere around there. That's you amazing. know, a thousand, thousand bucks. Yeah. That's amazing. So yeah. what do you look for when you're looking at which when deciding which lows are logistically reasonable for you um, and which ones are kind of like get those out of the way? What do you look for? I know you mentioned you kind of discard the, the local ones, but. Yeah, I try to look for the, I try to I, I try to look for the longest. I, I try to go for the long ones first. I spend my first like quarter part of the day like bidding on bidding high and mm-hmm. bidding on long jobs. Mm-hmm. So I'm bidding like a dollar, a dollar ten, dollar twenty, just to see where it goes. And then if by the afternoon I'm not getting anything, I'll start to lower my bid. Um, but I, I try to look for just good areas, you know, like Chicago, um, places where I know I can get freight pretty much the next day. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's so like you don't. I'm, look I'm, at- I'm, I'm, I'm trying to take where, whatever wherever the money is. I'm trying to go like. Five weeks ago, there was a trip going up to, to Canada to like a really remote area mm-hmm. and it, it paid really well, but I was going to be stuck in the middle of nowhere with a deadhead of like 400 miles mm-hmm. to get to the nearest city. And it, that's just not worth it. You know what I mean? You got right. you to take, take into account where you're going to end up and if you're going to have to deadhead somewhere else. Um, like that trip I told you about coming down here that paid 1300 mm-hmm. uh, for 920 miles. Uh, to get back out of Texas and do that same trip back to Minnesota, well, a different mm-hmm. for a different company, uh, but that one's paying uh, closer to a dollar a mile, about nine hundred bucks. So even though I got a good rate coming down, I got a, a lesser rate going back up. But it averages out, you know what I mean. So it's it's all about averages. People try to hit home runs on every trip, and they sit around and people waste time. If your wheels ain't moving, you ain't making money, you know. I and people always you. say don't. People say don't take cheap freight, don't take cheap freight, but that's just relative to whoever the owner operator is and whatever their expenses are. So if you can turn a profit, what what's cheap freight? You know what I mean? So exactly. Well, like, do they have rating systems for um, warehouses? Um, because, um, like, for example, like if the warehouse is just unorganized and it just give headaches, you know, to every driver that, that comes around, um, the pallets are kind of like out of whack. You know what I mean? Um, they do no. but there's nothing really that ever happens there's no like repercussions or fines or penalties or nothing like that just kind of people know you're a crappy shipper or receiver but i mean like is that I mean? something that you would look at of like you know like vetting the rating you, do, you don't you don't you don't really know when you're booking loads we get like the the least about amount of information they give us the the least info ever as far as the, the weight of the freight the dimensions it's usually wrong you know what i mean it's mm-hmm. just all because all it's all rushed they're trying to get this shipped in a short amount of time so the information is usually wrong and um so yeah it's just i don't know what they, i'm they just want you to pick it up no i got you they just want you to pick it up and that's it right <laughs> yeah yeah and you know you, you don't know we don't know that until we get the bol or the rc that confirms where we're going and all that stuff when mm-hmm. we're placing bids on stuff it's very vague information it tells you where you're picking up where it's going pick up time delivery time and the weight you know and it's, like i said most of the time that's incorrect you know got so. it so it, let's say me for an example i'm trying to say tomorrow i'm like you know what i'm going to get into this industry um and you know maybe i want to just you know get a job at a company first right you know just to try it out what kind of credentials do i need to get started in this uh in this industry there's a few ways to get started. Uh, like I like I started driving for a fleet owner or a carrier. Okay. Um, I think that's the best way to get into the business and mm-hmm. find out if it's something that you really want to do without having to invest a crap load of money. You know, mm-hmm. 
Uh, at most, you're going to have to have a cushion of maybe $2,000 for gas and stuff. Cause in most cases, if you're with a fleet owner or a carrier, you're going to do like a 60, 40 split where you get 60% of the loads, uh, and they get 40%. You pay gas and tolls. They pay for the van insurance, anything needs to be fixed and stuff like that. So that's the best way to like, kind of get into it. It's just really tough, man. Be I got very lucky. I got, I'm very blessed with how things worked out. The people I started working for, they already had connections in the business. They've been in transportation in Chicago for years. So, um, they're from North Macedonia. There's a lot of Russians in this business. It's pr pretty much, um, the market is cornered. You know what I mean? There, there's certain people who run the industry. So if you don't, if you don't have a connection with a lot of these people, like the carry I'm working with GTMM, they don't really know me. So it's like, they're going to put other people that they've been working with or people they know as a priority over me. You know what I mean? So it's hard to get in this business and really do well. A lot of people end, end, up, end up quitting because their first week they end up sitting or, you know, they can't take the time by themselves. Most people don't like being in their own silence, to be honest with you, you know? So, uh, if you don't like that, this is going to eat you up. And, uh, so yeah, if you want to get in the business, that, that's one way to get into it by driving for like a fleet owner or a carrier. And if you want to get into it as an owner operator um, and take that leap, I mean, you got to pretty much get a van. Uh, you got to get cargo insurance. So you want to do like a, a million dollar liability, hundred thousand dollar cargo policy uh, for most carriers. Um, on insurance, you're going to be spending anywhere between on the low end, 500 bucks a month to on the high end, two grand a month, you know? um for insurance your van payment if you're going to do financing probably about a thousand to fifteen hundred bucks a month um and then your gas your fuel that's a huge expense obviously eating on the road is an expense um so yeah those are those are the two ways you could pretty much get into the business by driving for somebody you're doing it on your own get, getting your mc number doing all that stuff but it really isn't much you know at the end of the day it's just a matter of you know, putting the paperwork in and, and waiting. And you do not need a CDL. Is that correct? No CDL. You do not need a CDL. Okay. No, do sir. you need any other specialized, uh, maybe like licenses or anything like that to, you know, get so operated? I, I have a Twit card and I'm uh, TSA certified. I spent like mm -hmm. 300 bucks doing that. That kind of gives you access to loads at ports and military bases and stuff like that. That'll help you out like in a pinch. And those loads an advantage a little bit, a little bit, not mm -hmm. much. Honestly, the three times that I've used it, I've never had to show it, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? So, uh, not saying try to do it if you don't have one, cause then you'll end up probably losing a load and wasting time. But, um, if you want to get your CDO, you can get your hazmat through your CDO. Mm -hmm. Uh, not much hazmat. I don't really want to haul hazmat. You know, I don't want to be carrying around like chemicals and stuff like that. So, right, right. Uh, even though they do pay more, it's just it's just not worth it for me. I mean, when you start carrying mm -hmm. chemicals and, and and tubs of you know liquids and stuff, it's just that that slushing around back there while you're driving. Is that no the, the 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 risk is that because you're carrying the risk of like it spilling, or is that like like stuff that can be hazardous to the fumes or something like that? Like, what is the? It's it's more so just when you carry loads and you have the liquids like it's like a counterbalance. Like, say you're turning. And then it's like 3,000 pounds of liquid in the back. We'll mm. throw this thing, you know, side to side. <laughs> throw so, it around. Yeah. Your wheel bearings are going to be all like. <laughs> unless you're taking like a small load or something like that. Like has, hazmat could also be medical stuff, you know, stuff that's hazardous materials or whatever that they're just dumping out, throwing out or whatever. It could be so many things. And I don't really know too many people that have a CDL or hazmat endorsement that really use it. Uh, in expediting it's not something that happens too often but it might help you out in a pinch you know i see i see yeah. so what are the best vehicles um to get like if you're trying to get into this industry i love the sprinter van the mercedes sprinter van the 2500 it's a 170 uh 170 inch wheelbase and it's a high roof so it's like 72 inches high i can fit 53 inches wide like a pallet most pallets are 48 inches because mm -hmm. the wheel well back there i have a 53 inch clearance um so the mercedes sprinter van the ford transit and the uh the dodge um what is the dodge um i can't think of the name um uh, wow brain fart <laughs>
but yeah, the, those are those are the three main ones. You know, if you're gonna go with a cargo van, do you recommend um, starting off with the with the used or new? Uh, it, it's all dependent on the person. If you have great credit, you know, and you can get something brand new. Well, in, in your case, like, let's, say, let's say in your case, in your case, right? Like, did you start off with used? You had the let's say you had the money, right? Did you start off with the used or well, new? If I if I if I had the money, I would start new. You know, Just like new. my okay. my plan was to 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 run, save my money. Save twenty thousand dollars, ten thousand, ten thousand to put down on the van, ten thousand to put down on insurance. That was my main goal. Uh, the way I got this van is, it, it, the van found me pretty much, just like the, the job did. Um, one of my subscribers uh, hit me up probably about a year ago, asked me if I could hook him up with my dispatcher, and I pretty much told people no all the time. I mean, I have people hit me every day. Can you hook me up? Can you hook me up? And the reason I say no is because we're a small company. Like it's one dispatcher. It's a mom and pop operation. We can only take six vans on. So, you know, right now we have those vans, you know, we have six vans un under our contract. So, um, but I hooked him up and later down the road, he got a job offer for a solar battery company opening up a North American division and making like 12 K a month base salary and like crazy benefits. So he had this van and he's like, I'm, I'm going to sell a van or I'm going to keep it. And he's like, I thought about your YouTube channel and what you're trying to do and becoming an owner operator. He's like, you want to just take over my payments and take over my business? And it, like, it fell in my lap. You know, I'm, it's just wild how it happened really. Um, so yeah, my initial plan was to buy a new van, but since this van is used and it just kind of fell in my lap, I'm driving a used van. So. Wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, can you describe a little bit, like just give us a glimpse of like what it's like, to be on the road and uh, just like, how's your living set up? Like, can you explain that a little bit? Uh, so I have a, I have a bed back here. Um, I built the bed pretty much. It folds up into the wall. So if I have three pallets, I still have the room. Um, and if I really got to sleep, I can sleep up here with Bubba Joe. I built him a bed uh, that's right here. So it takes up like three quarters of the front of the van. And sometimes if I have three pallets back there and I'm full, it's me and him, you know, up close and personal. Uh, but you know, it's maybe, like I said, I'm sleeping three to four hours. So it's, it doesn't really matter to me. I'm so tired. I just pass out. He does. He sleeps all the time. So for him, it's whatever. Um, so yeah, I have that, um, planet fitness is where I go shower. It's where I go work out. I try to do that three, four times a week, you know, um, food is really tough out here. When I go back and I redo my van, I got a battery back there. I'm going to hook up a refrigerator and a few other things that make it more home. Take out this wall. I'm gonna take out the passenger seat. I'm gonna build him a new bed with some shelving. Um, I have a portable AC unit back there. It's battery powered by like a lithium battery. Um, it's called a Zero Breeze Mark II. Um, so I have that. I'll put that here. It vents out the window in the summertime when it's hot. You know, I have a. I'm gonna get a diesel heater for the winter time, so that keeps me pretty warm. That's what I had in the last van. It just siphoned diesel out of the gas tank and pretty much it's very very fuel efficient because to run to run a diesel heater all night long you probably use maybe half a gallon in gas and diesel mm -hmm. so it keeps you war super warm all night so uh, it's definitely not glamorous you know you're, you're you're peeing in cups and you know pooping in buckets man <laughs> you know what i mean so the life of a trucker the life of a trucker like it, it makes sense you know and uh and it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's finance, it's financially like it makes, it makes so much sense. You know what I mean? Um, it, it just, you know, like I told you, I, I, I've been on a, you know, I uh, traveled, you know, across the States like twice and, um, and just being able to like, you know, take naps to sleep whenever I want to, you know, uh, you know, wake up, you know, go to the next location, you know, like, um, um, and you know, like whatever the destination was, you know, like, you know, I had to like, cause like. I went from the East coast to the West coast. Right. Cause I lived in San Francisco and, uh, and just stopping in di different, different States, you know what I mean? And just knowing, okay, I'm being Mexico today. And you just, you know, like you can just, you can basically like just find a parking lot, take a nap, you know what I mean? Wake up and then you just keep going, you know, in the middle of the night or in the daytime, whenever you feel like it. So it's like touch and go. So that's what I really like versus a hotel, a hotel, an apartment. It just, it's expensive. Um, and it just financially, it's not reasonable. You know what I mean? For um, sure. So I really love, that's what I really love about, you know, how you have things set up. Yeah. It's very touch and go, like you said. And and the best thing about it right now for me is I just paid my last month's rent. I'm paying for rent for a place that I stayed at maybe 30 days last year, you know, 
Um, so it was just a waste of money. And now I'm going to be saving that on top of, I don't have a car payment. You know what I mean? I, another thing about my story is before all this even happened, like a week before this even happened, my car got repossessed and my car got repossessed when I was like 16 years old. I'm 35 now. I got repossessed when I was 16. It was like the end of the world for me. But it's like, oh my God, what am I going to do? When this car got taken, I like I had no worries, no cares. I was like, I felt like a weight off my shoulders. And even though I had to find a way to get to work and stuff like that and all this stuff, I just, I just, I don't know, man. Uh, it is weird how it all happened because the next week I got this job where I didn't, I didn't, I didn't need a car anymore. You know what I mean? I, I didn't need it. So um it is weird how my car got taken away from me and then i got this opportunity where i was pretty much driving this van when i went home i didn't need to, to give them the van back they just let me drive it around for personal use if i wanted to and now that i have my own van this is where i live you know this is i'm gonna be here i'm trying to do a whole year pretty much straight and just taking maybe like a week off every every other month you know what i mean i'm, Brandon, I'm really would you trying say, to like would you say this kind of lifestyle made you realize that a lot of things in life you really don't need Right. Oh, crazy. Of- yeah. Oh, man. Like I used to be so materialistic. I- I'm a hip hop artist, bro. I used to always have the nicest J's and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. I used to be just so complicated and stuff. And now it's like my life is so minimalist, you know, like so simplistic, I have- right? Mm-hmm. So simplistic. So so I feel like when I am ready to to go ahead and start, you know, transitioning my life out of the van life into, you know, my next step or whatever it may be that I'm going to be so much more financially conscious and aware of my myself and what I need as opposed to what I want. You know, uh, it's funny for Christmas, I bought myself a, a new pair of, you know, some Nike dunks, you know, that mm-hmm. I have, I still haven't even worn, you know, I'm never going to, I probably won't wear those for like another year or two because I have no reason to, you know, like, so, um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely shown me that we deal with a lot of excess. Yeah. You know, I, I, a lot honestly, of, like, I mean, and I mean to talk for everyone, but I really do think that's a lifestyle that I think everyone should at least experience. So I'm not saying just jump into the business, but I'm saying even traveling, you know, long distances and being able to like not rely on anything, you know, like uh, just whatever you have on your back or whatever you can fit into your vehicle and just travel. I think you really learn a lot about yourself, you know, and you realize oh, for that sure. a lot, 90% of the stuff that we worry about and stress about in life is not an issue at all. Yeah, well, it gets to a point where, you know, you get on the road and you're listening to your music and your podcasts and whatever, whatever it may be until it gets to a point where you're, you're you've driven for three, four months. And it's like you, you realize all this stuff is just noise, it's just yeah. extra noise and extra uh, stimulation that we don't need. You know what I mean? And it gets to a point where you start driving in silence and you start start getting comfortable within your own self and you start. You know, for me, I'm spiritual. I'm not really religious, but I talk to God, you know what I mean, a lot. And that's what I've done a lot of out here, you know, is just mm-hmm. working working th- through my faults. This this road life can either, it can either build you up and make you a better person or it can r- really expose your your faults and your filth and, you, you know, your bad habits. Mm-hmm. And it can really, des- it can really destroy you, make, you know, take you out. So, uh I definitely suggest it for everybody to at least try it. The thing is most people, most people don't want to step out of their comfort zone. You know, that's, that's the thing. So, but I suggest it for everybody for sure. It's just not for everybody. Understood. Understood. So what's some hitting expenses that you think a lot of people kind of like overlook when getting into this industry? Um, You mentioned a few, you know, like you mentioned, you know, gas, of course, you know, you mentioned some other ones, Um, but I feel, you know, being on the road this, you know, that much, I'm sure you must face a lot of wear and tear, um, you know, maybe like road hazards, you know, like, I don't know, maybe flat tires in the middle of nowhere. Um, like what, what's some hidden fees that you may, you think that a lot of people may overlook before they get into this industry? Uh, well, you're doing an oil change every other week. Cause you know, mm. you're doing, you know, so many miles. So, I mean, that right there is, you know, 200 bucks. That's going to be going out every, every two weeks or so alignments, you know, rotations, um, and those are those in and out? Are those in and out appointments, or are those kind of sometimes taking? You just got to get it where you can get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so sometimes uh, that can go, kind of like take you out the whole day. Sometimes I'm guessing it could. It could, yeah. Because especially if you have the long extended, like I had the 170 extended Sprinter van before, mm-hmm. and they can't they can't fit into a lot of uh, bays, like garage bays, because yeah. 
the extra 28 inches like after they put it on the lift they try to lift it up you still have a van sticking out of the door and they, they, they can't they can't work on it so you end up going and some some places don't want to want to do oil change changes in the sprinters because they feel like it's difficult when really they're very simple engines mm-hmm. so yeah that stuff stuff like that people don't think about uh tolls get very expensive out here mm-hmm. um food is a huge thing that i'm trying to really hone in on once i get that refrigerator in here i'm gonna start cooking in the van you know saving that 10 20 bucks a day adds up tremendously mm-hmm. um but there i mean if if you if you can really hone in and get rid of the extra expenses and stuff like that. And there's really not much more after that. I mean, you know, you got your tolls, you got your insurance, you got your van, you got your gas. I mean, your toll at, at that point, you're, you're, you're a couple thousand dollars in, I mean, four or $5,000 in every month. So, yeah. So uh, I know you, in your, your channel, you mentioned a lot, like some, some methods on how you deal with some of these issues, right. Or some of these expenses. Um, so such as advantage cards and gas cards and, you know, all these other, you know, like perks that you can get when you're spending or sharing them with other people to get perks. Right. Um, right. So like, I'm guessing that also plays a part, right. In helping you deal with yeah. some of these issues. I've been using the, uh, the upside app, you know, okay. I saw, saw, saw a commercial for so long. They were so annoying, you know, and I'm like, Oh, whatever. <laughs> And I finally ended up downloading it. And now that I have a YouTube channel and I can kind of promote it and people mm-hmm. can sign up under me, mm-hmm. I'm I'm getting like four or five bucks almost every day just oh. in like and cash back f- from my subscribers that use their their get they, they use the upside. I they use the app un- under me, you know, so mm-hmm. that's that's pretty cool. Uh, I save money on that. I mean, I saved 18 bucks uh filling up at the pump like three weeks ago because I had had so many bonuses from people signing up under me. So I don't really use gas cards really. Um, I just use the upside app. That's awesome. Um, And uh, so I want to talk a little bit about perks. Um, um, And then, you know, we're going to talk about like um, your YouTube channel a little bit and then, um, and then where people can find you and stuff like that. Okay. Um, But yeah. So before we dive into that, uh, like what's some, um, do you do you have uh well, do you ever have to load and unload when you're delivering to some of these warehouses? Ninety percent of the time, no, it's no touch freight. They'll load it up with a forklift or something like that. If you do have to touch it, you usually ask for a driver assist in those cases. Okay. And uh it could be, be anywhere from fifty to a hundred, hundred fifty, two hundred bucks, just depending on how much you have to move. And it's pretty much what, what whatever you tell them, you know, you want you want to be compensated for it. And then if they They'll probably negotiate with you most of the time. Sometimes mm-hmm. I'll be like, you know, 75 bucks and they say yes right away. I'm like, man, I should have asked for more, you know? Yeah. You just never really know. But yeah, in most cases, it's no touch freight. If you got to touch it, then you get paid for it. And that's where, like, uh, I've seen a video you also mentioned, like 75 bucks or whatever, like per pallet or something like that, that you have to actually physically touch. So you can negotiate your rate when, when you have to actually physically remove it, I'm guessing. Yeah, because I mean, the, the freight has to be unloaded. They have to get it to the destination, and if the other people will unload you and you have to do it yourself, I mean, you're pretty much they're pretty much at your mercy. You know what I mean? So, if they want it there, how bad do they want it there? You know? So, yeah. yeah. I understand. Um, and so, what's the best quality? So, so this is about the best qualities of like being a, a spinner van owner. Uh, so, besides the money, um, the freedom. I like pretty much dictating where I go, what I do, if I want to work, if I don't want to work. Um, I like the hustle. I enjoy making deals happen. You know, I've always liked negotiating and doing all that stuff. So um, that's fun. You know, your your input into this business is what you're going to get out of it. So I always like that aspect. Um, seeing the country, obviously, is a plus. Yeah, I mean, those are pretty much the main things. You know, it's it's not glamorous by any means, but, and it's not forever, you know, it's a stepping stone in my life. Um, and yeah. Where do you see, what do you see, um, your company going? What do you see yourself and where do you see your company going in the next, let's say like five to 10 years? Do you see yourself being more of an, like still an operator or like, how do you. With the way the YouTube thing is going, I really want to create a community of drivers and the way the industry is, we're just being screwed by brokers right now. Mm. Uh, so I really want to, take the control back to the drivers and i want to find a way to do that whether it's through my own uh carrier service you know if i'm book you know booking loads for other people and doing that stuff you know if i start my own company and start you know doing that stuff um 
So yeah, I see myself scaling the business for sure. I don't know if I want to end up buying my own vans or just sign owner operators on. It's a lot less risk, you know, when you put somebody in your your van and your investment, are they going to treat it like you would? Probably so not. A, like can of worms, huh? Yeah, and it's a lot of headache. You got to worry about, you know, drivers getting there on time and stuff like that. And it's just at, at that point is it is the reward really worth the headache? You know, I'm, just, I'm trying to live my life as peaceful as possible and like I'm not trying to have much stress. I don't mind stress. I don't mind working and putting in work and doing all that, but it has to be the output has to be worth it for me. So if I, if, if I'm doing that, I gotta be making a million plus a year. If I'm, you know, running a, a company with multiple vans, multiple dispatchers, stuff like that, Make you know, but I, day, right? yeah, at the same time, I've, 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 I've run a lot of different businesses and have a lot of skills and different things. So like I said, it's just a stepping stone. I p- plan on opening many other businesses, uh, in my lifetime. So that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. And I'm pretty sure you have mentioned that on your YouTube channel, right? Like keep everybody in the loop. A little bit, yeah, I do. I try to keep them in in, in touch, but I really don't know wh- where I'm going on this. This next year is really going to determine determine a lot how this next year goes. So this is my first month as an expediter, being you know, owner operator. So for me, it's you know probably one of the reasons why I haven't been putting videos out lately is I'm just trying to focus on being successful. I'm not really trying to focus on putting out videos right now as much as I was before. I guess I had a lot more time before too to mm-hmm. edit down the videos and stuff. I mean, when I'm doing a 20 minute video. That's like three hours of footage I usually have to go through to edit down. and It takes a lot of time. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Editing is no joke. <laughs> yeah, no, it's no, no, joke. no joke. No joke. <laughs> I used to, I, like I said, I was a hip hop artist. So I, I was always on the other side of the camera and like just telling directors, you know, handle that, you know, no problem. And like to see what they went through with editing and, you know, all that stuff. It's like, man, I have a whole, whole, whole different respect for it for sure. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So if you guys like really want to dive into more and learn more about the sprinter, uh, sprinter van industry, like definitely check out his YouTube channel. It's going to be expediting America. Um, we'll be leaving a link in the description below. Um, and you can, you, he's, like his YouTube channel, he's going to break down everything. He's very transparent. Um, he shows you the day in the life of his, uh, his journey. You can see, you know, the, the, the star, of, the star of the channel, uh, Bubba Joe, um, and how he's able to travel around and, uh, just like live a really like, 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 fresh, like, 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 Joe, just chilling. He, he's enjoying chilling. Going the view. <laughs> just chilling. Um, and like, his channel is so awesome, you guys. So, like, uh, definitely, like, check out his channel. Go, you know, like his channel. Go subscribe. Um, and tell him that we sent you. Um, and uh, yeah, like, is there anything that you want to add? Uh, no, I just appreciate the opportunity. Appreciate you talking to me. Uh, you're the first podcast I've ever done awesome. outside of my own, outside of my own channel. A lot of people have asked me. I just, you know, I don't know. I like structure. I like people know what they're doing. I saw your channel. What, by, by the way, how'd you get the name for the channel? Ah, so uh, so actually, my my co-founder came up with it. So we started a dispatch, uh, uh, not a yeah, dispatch uh, software. Um, and my co-founder actually came up with the name Zimpath, and we kind of ran with it since then. Yeah, you yeah, started we, a, a dispatch dispatch software. That's correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? dispatch software. Called, yeah, yeah. So we're we're based in Silicon Valley, so San Francisco. Um, and, uh, yeah, so yeah, I'm an engineer, you know, my co-founder is an engineer. We're all engineers. Um, that's dope, man. That's yeah, so yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so that's kind of how we kind of, kind of came about that. And we're just kind of like, just, we're just like everybody else. We're just going with the flow, you know, we're, we're you know, we're building, we're talking and you know, we're, and we're just kind of like, we're learning just as much as everybody else is, you know, trying to learn and figuring you know, it out as we go, man. Figuring it out, yeah. man. That's what it's all about, you know, and, and cause, it's been, cause things, things change every day. So you have to evolve and change and grow into you know, because this industry is cha- changing every day. Every industry really is. The, the world is changing every day. You know, so you can't you can't just sit there and just stay in the old. You know, you, you got you got to stay up to date and be willing to put in that work. You know, I think I think like these kind of moments. You know, like me being able to talk to amazing founders like yourself. You know, it really makes it worthwhile. You know, um, Thank you. and you know, like you guys are like a definitely a huge inspiration. You know, um, and. Uh, yeah, like, I mean, I just think it's just awesome, you know, like just being able to kind of tie, kind of like what you just said, you know, tying the community around, you know, and kind of like bringing everything together into one. It makes yeah. you like, yeah, I feel like you're part of a whole community. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I, that's another aspect that's helped me out tremendously with my, my mental health out here, aside from having Bubba Joe with me, is is the, connecting with people from all over the world, you know, New Zealand, uh, Germany, you name it. You know, it's just wild that people watch me from all over and 
and literally like binge watch my my episode it's crazy they'll tell me like all these things about my episodes where i didn't even notice a certain <laughs> thing, you know i'm like like that's wild to me bro like i just yeah. didn't expect that when i first started this i didn't think it was going to grow to the point where i'm doing like 20 to 50 subscribers a day it's just I don't know. It's just wild to me. It's just crazy, right? Blows my mind. Yeah, crazy, man. You're doing it up, man. And like, I wish you the most success. And uh, I'm looking forward to following your journey. Uh, Thank you, Brendan, bro. is there any like, um, where can viewers find you? You know, other than you know your YouTube channel, um, where else can people find you and connect with you if they? So pretty, pretty much just YouTube right now. I'm trying okay. to get into the other stuff, I, but one of the main things I did when I got out here on the road was disconnected from Facebook and a lot of other things, just because it's just extra noise. Like I said, man, and it, and it kind of felt nice, be, you know, disconnected from everything because my whole life, like I said, I was doing hip hop. I was o- always on social media, like, look at me, look at what I'm doing, check out my music, this, that, this, that, check, check, check. And like, it's so nice to not, not do that right now, you know, and just, you know, put out a YouTube video every week and kind of do that thing right now. So as of right now, just YouTube, but eventually, because I have to grow the channel, and everyone's telling me I do TikTok, Instagram, all this other stuff. So eventually I will <laughs> probably get into it. But right now, just YouTube expediting America. And so, what about, do you have a website that people can check out or? Uh, I don't have a website yet. I don't have okay. a website yet. I do have merch coming out soon for uh, the road dog clothing company that I'm going to do with Bubba Joe here. And okay. uh, so I will be putting a, w- a website soon for merch and some other things. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. You guys check out his YouTube channel. Brandon, it was Thank a pleasure. You. Thank you so much for being a guest on Zimpath Radio and uh, look forward to connecting with you again soon. Peace, man. Appreciate right. you.